This is an AutoSubs review video uh, and AutoSubs is available for Mac, Windows and Linux as a standalone application and also for DaVinci Resolve, especially for people who are using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Now, these are my thoughts uh, more or less on what I find good with AutoSubs and what they feel needs to be improved uh, or even added in AutoSubs to make it so much, much better. So. Uh, there's a ton of things. So it's AI powered subtitles for DaVinci Resolve. You can generate and style subtitles directly on your timeline to match your brand. Now, if you scroll down, you can see how it works. Model selection, AI processing, you can edit and export. So key features, quick generation, customize, diarize audio, multilingual, really awesome. That's powered by OpenAI's Whisper. And subtitle templates are coming soon. Uh, so that's just the bare bones and you can always download it from the link in the description below. Now, let's open up Auto Subs. And I've got it right here. And I'll just open it up. Uh, we're going to land on the standalone uh, section here, but you also have the Resolve section. Now, uh, let's say we go to the standalone option right now. Uh, the first issue I have is with when you add a file. So for example, I'm going to drag and drop a file here. It's right there. Instead of seeing the name of the file, what we get is the URL or more or less the path to the file and it's incomplete and you can actually not select it. So it would be awesome, especially uh, to have the file. We can actually see it here instead of having this URL because clearly it's not clickable and it doesn't have anything for us to see. Now, uh, that's the first section with an issue. Everything else now, when you go to the processing, is really awesome. The input language, it's auto, you can set what you want. You can also translate to English because OpenAI's Whisper supports that. And speaker labeling, that is also awesome. So there are really, really good things in AutoSubs. Now, the other issue is the AI transcription model. And by this, what I mean is that, for example, let's say you come here and select a model. Let's say we go with tiny. What happens is this model is not downloaded on this particular computer for this particular program. Now, it's not yet downloaded. By default, what I would hope this would, uh, would, would actually work is that when you select a model, let's say you go with a small one, you should be prompted to download this particular AI transcription model. That is what makes sense. But the time when you're prompted to download is when you start transcription, which is not the most ideal uh, kind of thing. Now, that's another kind of downside to it. Uh, these experimental options, dynamic time wrapping are really, really good because they improve subtitle word alignment and they improve transcription speed. Uh, something else I really love is the text formatting, subtitle rules. Now, here you can make all the things that you want to, to the character limit, line count, uh, word limit, uh, for example, all these things. And I'm assuming disable no word limit. Let's say two lines, one word. So let us actually see if this actually works uh, the way it's it's kind of advertised uh, right here. Uh, I've actually, I had it as one of my issues uh, having one word subtitles, but let's see actually if it's going to work. So I might need to change this back to the model that is already downloaded or just leave it at tiny so that you see the issue that I'm mentioning. Uh, but it's always good to have the subtitle lines, uh, the casing, if you want it to be normal, lowercase, uppercase, especially if you're working on social media videos, you might need to use some of this, uh, especially uh, with the DaVinci Resolve uh, type of uh, thing. So also censoring sensitive words, that's really awesome. Now, this is what I was mentioning. Because we don't have this model downloaded, when you hit on start transcription, the first thing it's going to do is download the model, which is not the most ideal thing. Although once you download it, it's going to be on uh, this particular application once you open it up. Once it's done, it's going to begin the transcription. And yes, it gives us one word subtitles, which is super, super awesome. So uh, one word subtitles was one of my issues, but I've seen that it's actually doing the best to actually sort that out right here. So what I'd kind of also like to see in the AI transcription model is other models available. Uh, for example, 
uh, getting APIs to tools like Eleven Labs or even uh, the Chat GPT or GPT. I think it was GPT 4.0 transcription model, which is better than Whisper. Uh, that would be awesome to have, or even other uh, models available right here. Also. AI translation uh, because this translation is only uh, via Whisper, OpenAI Whisper model. I wish we had other translation options right here. So uh, there we have it. And then we've got when you go to import or export a script, export, you only have two options export as SRT or a JSON file. It would be awesome to add export as a text file. That's uh, that would be a really handy feature right here. Now, something else I have a real issue with is if you'd like to preview these subtitles, there's no way to hear what is going on. I don't know how they can actually make this, but it would be awesome to have like a preview window uh, that plays the video or if it's the audio and you can easily follow along because the subtitles are following along with the video so that you see what you're making changes to if it's correct or if it's not a play or listen stroke watch type of preview window here would be important for this. Uh, next up, we've got batch transcription and subtitling. So let's assume you've got a ton of files. You've got uh, the best models available. You've, you've gone for the large uh, models right here and you have them ready. Instead of having to add one file at a time right here, I wish it was possible to actually batch process, but when you do that, maybe you'll have to skip this particular step because we just need uh, the final output of the subtitles as downloadables. So batch transcription and subtitling. And then, uh, as I mentioned here, make the added media visible. So we can actually even use this section, uh, probably make it a little bit bigger because this is a scrolling window for or to act like a preview window with controls for play stop and all that so when the transcription is done you can use this to follow along uh, for this and then uh, we've got what else uh, the possibility to sync an audio and a transcript so when it comes to import and the import section here you can only import srt files uh, my hope and pray is that in future you can be able to import text files and sync or even if it's SRT files, import and sync. Now, there is more or less of an import issue here. So if I click on import, uh, let me see, it's not going to, yeah, it's going to allow me, uh, you click on that, it lands you to the downloads folder. Let's assume my file is another folder on my desktop. When you do that, that's a bug. You have to redo that again. For it to kinda import, it actually imported in the background or something of that sort. Uh, it did something right there, but it's, it's a bug of sorts. It should be that when you import, it's uh, super, super simple. Now, something else is that when you import, let's see how we can actually do this. Okay, something else. Should be possible to clear the subtitles that we have here. I've not seen any uh, option showing how to clear. So it would be awesome to kind of clear. And if you make a selection, press on delete, it doesn't work. It would be important if it's possible to clear the subtitles from this particular page. So that I actually uh, use it for other things uh, as we want but when working in something like resolve let's say we're working in resolve a feature that i have found to really like is the import feature so let's assume we import this sarti import okay open sorry and then import you see the, the the error i told you the bug open so they have been imported what have they done it has taken up the uh, settings we have here one word so let's say we go with zero and then the line count and all that uh -huh, that's okay let's say we go with two that's okay and then we do the import again import file see what it does 
and then it accepts on like second try so that's an issue of some sort so when you do this one thing you need to take a note of is that an SRT subtitle file is characterized by a number time codes and the time codes have a comma right there if you're working with VTT subtitle files they have a full stop and then the subtitle lines or line and then a space a number and so on and so forth that is the characteristic of a subrip or SRT subtitle file now when it comes to auto subs it actually picks the numbers the numbers they should not be here and probably the reason why this import feature would be so powerful in DaVinci Resolve but because of this it not recognizing the numbers or recognizing the numbers and putting them right here is actually making it not be the best and you can see some time codes are just out of place it's it's really really chaotic i wish they can actually streamline this particular option because i found it to be very useful and if you're working in davinci resolve and maybe you've outsourced uh, the transcription and subtitling work you just need to import and then click on add to timeline based on the timeline that you're working with uh, but those are the few remarks i do have on autosubs it's uh, a really really good program and if some of the few things can be fine-tuned it would be really really awesome and then the final one because we might have a preview window uh, we might have uh, everything going on for the export let's assume somebody just wanted to use this it would be awesome to have burn-in subtitles to video if uh, that's what we actually working with it would be really really awesome but those are my reviews or thoughts for autosubs and what I wish can be improved and some of the key features that are really, really awesome. That's it for this video. I hope it's of value to you. Thanks for watching.